Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to the Night Sky Knitting Channel. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and I like to talk about knitting. So today, the topic of this video is going to be underrated winter accessory knitting patterns that I have started knitting, plan to knit, or really, really want to knit this winter because two reasons. One, I'm going through a big winter accessories phase right now. I think some of my sock mojo and enthusiasm has kind of transferred into mittens and other cold weather gear. And I keep losing mittens and hats, so I need to <laughs> replace my stock. And two, I really love this new wave of videos other creators have been making on underrated knitting patterns and showcasing not just indie yarns but indie designers i for my 1000 subscriber giveaway i think in march uh the prompt to enter the giveaway was please share with me an underrated knitting designer or knitting pattern in your opinion and i have found so many patterns that i've like genuinely bought and knit and have you guys have seen on my channel through that it was such a wonderful exercise in expanding my horizons and the same with the influx of videos by people like emily of high fiber knits anna passi trevino and also ira of the cookie knits knitting podcast these videos have helped expand my horizons and show me a whole host of new to me designers and patterns that appeal to my tastes, make sense for the climate I live in and the things that I need. And I'd like to partake by doing a winter accessories one. So without any further ado, I'm going to be looking at, I think 13 to 14 knitting patterns that I think broadly can be described as hats, cowls, mittens, and scarves. I think those are the four. I mean, I guess a couple balaclavas, spoiler alert, but that I am strongly considering knitting this winter. So I think first we're going to start with a couple cowls because I am not really a cowl person or a cowl or necks, I guess is the first category because I'm not really much of a cowl person. I typically find them to be kind of like useless for the cold, cold winters of Canada where I live. But I really like this trend of kind of necks or like dicky style cowls where you have something actually structured and thick that goes up to your chin um, and you can kind of burrow into as opposed to the really floppy, loose cowls that kind of sit on your collarbones that I'm used to, which offer me no protection from the ferocious winds. And I really like this trend of them kind of continuing down the torso a little bit on either side, almost like the top of a vest. However, especially since my preferred winter coat has uh, a neckline that's very similar to this, it's a V that kind of goes here. And whenever it's not windy, that's totally fine. But if there's any wind, it just cuts right straight to my neck. So I am really looking at the, sorry, my, my laptop with all of the project pages for these patterns. So I make sure I have all the information is, is just stage left so is, is right here so i'm going to be referring every so often but the first of these is the dies winter neck by tonye hodna i am so sorry for everyone's name i'm going to mispronounce in this video but it is a dk weight brioche neck where it has this really thick squishy warm turtleneck and then goes a few inches down the front and the back of the torso which for me seems to be a pretty fantastic combination of warm snuggly wind resistant without being too much fabric and without risking overheating in my um underneath my winter coat especially as i get like a bit of a, a sweat going as i trudge through the snow and I like it because it looks very modern and chic. And I think that the brioche would be very fun to knit. And I've done almost no brioche or no brioche. I cannot remember at this precise moment. So I think this would be a very good way to kind of get into the hang of it. And I find I really enjoy that kind of texture for winter accessory. I also like this one because I think at a DK weight, brioche would be thick enough to be warm and squishy, but not too thick that it would feel too hot the second you're indoors for a little bit, but you have to keep your winter stuff on, like taking 
public transit or maybe at the mall or things like that. And it does not use way too much yarn, which is another factor in how I'm looking at evaluating these different winter patterns, especially since I'm pretty sure I want to use the recycled cashmere from the sweater I unraveled from my father for this, which is more of a fingering weight. I don't want to have to triple this in order to uh, knit, knit that cowl, and so a DK weight kind of appeals to me. And it looks like it's available in about six different languages, English, French, German, Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish. So that's pretty cool. That is the Dies Winter Neck by Tonje, Tonji, Ton, Tonje Hodney. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so bad with Scandinavian names. All right, next is a free pattern. A bunch of these patterns are free just because I think a lot of winter accessories that appeal to me are a little bit simpler and it seems that often simple winter accessories are are luckily free so the, this is a worsted weight cowl by espace Tricot, which is a yarn store that puts out a lot of free knitting patterns you probably are familiar with them already and this cowl is called the cooler side of warm so i like this because once again it has that kind of turtlenecky fold that you can really dip your chin and snuggle the the bottom part of your face and when the wind howls but without having too much bulk on the upper body and again it has that split at the shoulders that allow for it to sit more nicely more neatly on you and not have it be kind of fighting with the collar of your jacket for space and this looks like it's a very very fast knit it's very modern looking in my opinion and it only requires about 320 meters of yarn. So I think this would probably also work as a good gift, but I'm definitely considering it with maybe another yarn than this. I have also a set that I got from Fleece Artist. These are meant to be held together. You can see I started swatching. I'm considering knitting the cooler side of warm in these yarns instead. And I think this would be a really bright, cozy, comfy, warm way to stay warm and also be visible to cars in the dark by not wearing all very dark winter accessories. And the last of these kind of cowl or collar or like neck style <laughs> accessories is the Carl Johan collar by Pernil Larsen of Knitting for Olive. And this is also a DK weight pattern that is stuck in net in the body for the front and the back with a nice cushiony ribbed turtleneck which I really like the look of. I think it would be easy to achieve with the blue yarn from my dad's sweater. And I think it would look very elegant and be a perfect amount of warm, but not too bulky. It also has an interesting shoulder. It looks like a bit of a saddle shoulder construction, which I've been seeing a lot more and more in patterns of late and is a trend I'm on board with and I think is really nice. And I like the look of kind of the, the bulky turtleneck with my V-shaped neckline coat. And so this is very appealing as a warm, very chic option. All right, maybe the most out there of these options is the BB Balaclava by Jungmin Choi. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, which is a free pattern and about a worsted weight, and it's an all-over seed stitch balaclava or hood. I know that balaclavas were really having a moment last year as a, you know, stylish winter accessory, and at the time I scoffed because I thought, wow, I'm never going to look good in a balaclava. And then this year, during a particularly nasty cold snap in the beginning of October. I was walking somewhere with like negative 15 wind chill and my hat was not cutting it with keeping my ears warm. And I knit myself a different balaclava, which I will show you on my next podcast episode. And it's been a game changer. I don't care that I look bad. I don't care that I look like an egg. I am so warm. I am so cozy in it. I am snug as a bug in a rug. I can listen to my music with my ears fully protected and I can just shwoof. It down the back of my head and have it sit around my neck like a hood when I need to take the O train or the bus and it's revolutionary. 
don't care if I look silly. They're so, so warm. So I'm strongly considering knitting myself this as an alternative. I was also surprised by how fast my first balaclava, which is the November balaclava by Petite Knit, knit up because I've been in the midst of a gift knitting, I would say, eleganza extravaganza, except it has not been fun. It has been stressful. So the fact that I was even able to knit this in the midst of my gift knitting marathon, I think tells you how fast balaclavas have ended up being. And I really like seed stitch. I like the look of it and I like knitting it. So this is a fun option for me if I decide that I need two balaclavas for this winter as opposed to just one. The next two kind of following from balaclavas, which I guess can be the bridge from the neck to the, to the head portion of my inspirational underappreciated patterns for this winter, is the spur hat by Hiromi Nagasawa, which is a half, like it's brioche for the top, but then it has a regular rib brim and really cute decreases and shaping for the top of the head. I really like that silhouette. I think it's very fun and warm at the same time. And I imagine you're gonna get a really nice fit with that really long folded brim plus the super thick brioche and the same as the Dees Winter neck. I like the idea of kind of dipping my toes into some brioche with this type of winter accessory. It looks pretty straightforward as a brioche noob such as myself and I can imagine wanting to knit myself this in a whole bunch of classic colors as a go-to pattern for a while on days when it's a little bit warmer and maybe I don't want to look like an egg in my balaclavas. It comes in two different sizes, small and large, but I, I don't know, I feel like it's so much easier to fudge yarn weight and size with winter patterns, you know, by going up a yarn weight or a needle size and all such manner of things. And I think this being brioche but in a fingering weight will again make it a nice combination of really warm but still pretty lightweight. A similar pattern, however a little bit more basic and I think more of a slog to knit because I've actually already knit one of these as a gift is the Head Sock, which is a free hat pattern by Amanda Steck, which is an all over two by two rib hat that has, in my opinion, very clean, elegant crown decreases that make it look like a store-bought sweater, oh my goodness, a store-bought hat in a good way. I really appreciate the clever way that you knit this inside out in order to achieve very smooth decreases that are stylish, very contemporary, classic, and I think look good on everyone. This is written for a fingering weight, however, and I can tell you all of this because it's a free pattern, you just kind of, if you wanna knit it in a DK or a worsted or even a bulky, the designer has some guidelines for how you can kind of mess around with alternating the stitch count, 16 stitch intervals, and then you can go up or down a weight of yarn to achieve whatever you want and use some scrap. I knit one for my boyfriend as a gift in this. I think it looks really nice and I want one for myself. The head sock has almost 700 projects on it on Ravelry. However, I don't think I've ever seen a knitting YouTuber or anyone on Instagram talk about it. So I'm bringing this all to your attention this winter in the Northern Hemisphere because I think a lot of us gravitate towards a simple ribbed hat, and I think that this is just a really great example of one of those. The category of winter knitting access or knit winter accessory that I'm the most excited about right now, and kind of the impetus for this video, is the mitten category. Here's the thing I have put off knitting myself mittens for two years, even though some of the very first knitting patterns that kind of drew me into wanting to relearn how to knit and get back into things were mittens is because I am so intimidated by picking a color because I want my mittens to match my hats and my scarves and my coats, but my hats, my scarves and my coats already don't match each other. And so then nothing really works in terms of a color scheme to look cohesive. And then I get stressed and then I don't buy or make any mittens and then my hands are cold. Also, the second reason I don't do it is because I don't lose a lot of things in life. I'm not typically a very forgetful person. When it comes to my stuff, I generally know where everything is all of the time. 
except mittens. I lose on average a pair of mittens every winter. I've been wearing one pair of mittens that I received as a gift from my boyfriend last winter and I've already lost the first one of them um, and it's the second week of December. So I just lose them and I don't want to spend hours and hours making something personal and fit to my hand and in my colors that I love so much and then lose it in a few months. So I think what I'm going to do is knit them anyway because I really want to and then put a little tag with how to contact me when I inevitably lose it in case someone finds it. So maybe that will be enough. But the first of the many, oh, and I've decided not to care about the colors. I want my winter accessories to be warm and functional and bright. And if they don't look good together, oh my goodness, who cares? So the first of these mittens is the Flora Mitten Pattern by Jenny Penny. And this mitten came out a year ago in December of 2021. However, there's only four projects on Ravelry and I couldn't find anything beyond those projects on Instagram, which to me is kind of shocking given how cute these mittens are. And I think the color possibilities, depending on what yarn you go with, I think they have a really, really cute, sweet retro mod fit to them, but it's a repetitive color work motif. So you could memorize that chart and not have to keep it in front of you the whole time. And I feel like you could use scraps and then do stripes in the flowers if you wanted to. You could do a variegated yarn and have it look really, really nice. You could make them really big in like a DK or a worsted weight and then felt them down. I really think that this is probably like the crown jewel amongst these underrated knitting patterns. And the few notes that are on Ravelry, no one is saying there's some type of, some type of god awful mistake that you should avoid at all costs, explaining why not a lot of people have made these. So I'm just gonna do it. I haven't fully decided what colors yet, because I'm wildly indecisive when it comes to picking colors for this sort of thing, because I don't feel like I have to, you know, accentuate my skin tone or match most of my wardrobe. I just have to pick things that I think will be pretty. And I think so many things would look very pretty in these mittens. And I'm going to knit them. I simply am. I think they're just so sweet. I think they're a beautiful twist on some kind of more traditional looking mittens. And I know that with the two layers of fingering weight yarn, it'll be hopefully both thin enough that you can still like use your hands in the winter and not feel really bulky and like you're wearing oven mitts, but still be warm. So that is the first. Next up are the Vintergak by Karen Holmberg. And this mitten appeals to me and I'm pretty sure I'm going to knit it in this yarn, which I received as a gift or a souvenir from my friend's recent trip, recent summer trip to uh, Scotland. She brought this back for me and I think that's so kind. I'm going to make these winter gack mittens with this because it's a sport weight mitten pattern that you then felt and then embroider onto, which I think is just a chef's kiss combo of warm, personalizable, and beautiful. And I'm on a bit of a felting kick right now. I felted some mittens for my brother. I have felted dryer balls. And I think that this cream, this undyed wool, will be a wonderful base to use all sorts of scraps to embroider uh, floral designs or leafy designs onto those mittens. And this is a really nice toothy, grippy, supernatural undyed yarn that I think will felt down very evenly and nicely. And I think this will be an easier one to tie into a whole bunch of my other accessories because cream is such a neutral and will match my kind of out there jackets. And I can then tie in other colors from my winter accessories like this yarn, which is left over from my balaclava or a similar type of blue in, or the pink from my other hat into the embroidery on this. And so this is my priority, I think, in terms of knitting these mittens because I think it'll just be faster. And then I can take my time really learning how to embroider properly because I've only done like two different embroidery stitches in my life. So those are the Winter Gack by Karen Holmberg. And I really like that it combines a few different crafts as I look to maybe expand my horizons a little bit in terms of the fiber arts and my crafting know-how. 
Next up is another pair of mittens that I am dying to try. Again, because I think that they're very innovative and interesting. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about them. And these are the Grown Together Mitts by I Know Vickman. And this is a stunning, it's stunning to me that this is a free pattern because of what it offers. And that is you knit two mittens at the same time together horizontally, like you knit them, like you pretend that the mittens, you know, you're knitting two hands like this, but you start at the thumbs, like going like this way, and then you knit the whole thing like that, and then you steek them. Like minimal ends to weave in, no putting stitches on hold, no thumb gusset really, that's annoying to make, no making a second mitt, no second mitt syndrome. And then it's really easy to customize because like, oh, even if the pattern says you knit only a certain amount of rows, you can just put it on your hand and then knit a little bit more. And I think that this is an excellent introductory steaking project for me who's never steaked before. Maybe you as an experienced steaker can say, no, 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 don't do that, Rachel. Please let me know in the comments below. But I have been looking at these since before I learned how to knit. I opened the pattern and was wildly intimidated. I still am a little bit now, even though I've been knitting for almost two years. But this is a sport weight pattern. It's free. There are less than 100 projects on Ravelry, which is, again, nuts to me because this is a free, incredibly interesting construction to mittens that looks wildly practical. But a lot of the projects that I have seen have really taken this almost as like a technique and a baseline stitch count and then done really different designs in terms of color work and texture which i think tells me a lot about how viable this is as a technique and i'm very very excited i'm it's one of the things i'm maybe going to pack for this winter break when i have some time off school and away from work to try after i felt some mitts and i'm thinking about doing them in these two colors of Hobie Evergreen yarn, which full disclosure was sent to me as part of an Instagram campaign, but they have nothing to do with the making of this video. And I think that it's a two color mitten. I mean, optional, but it's a two color mitten. And I think I might do these two. And I, oh, sooner or later, I will knit these mittens. It's just a matter of when. Next are the We Field House mitts by Sarah L. Kelly. Uh, AKA Grey Owl Knits. This was actually sort of a pattern that was recommended to me by a viewer in that giveaway comment section. Technically, it was the sock pattern version of these mittens, but I looked at these, fell in love with the mitten, and bought the pattern. And I have a lot to say. I don't understand how there are only 13 projects on Ravelry. This is a super cute, whimsical mitten motif. The charts, each mitten is charted for the three different sizes and then the left mitten and the right mitten. So you don't ever have to worry about mixing up the instructions between sizes unless you're fully looking at the wrong chart. Every technique is written out in a way that I didn't feel like I had to look up a video to figure out what I was doing. A couple of times I did just to confirm, but the written instructions were so clear I didn't need a video. And the written pattern is so clear that you just know what you're doing. I know because I'm currently knitting a pair of these. I love a Latvian braid. I feel like this is once again a beautiful traditional shape, but a, a, aligned with current trends of like cottage core, fairy like woodland aesthetics. And since I know that I love a good whimsical colorwork pattern, and a lot of you do, I really recommend this one. So this is the Wild Field House mitt. I really, it's so much fun. The inside, the hand of the mitten is very easily memorizable. And then the color work on the front part of the mitt, you can really see what's going on always. So you know where you are. And I am eagerly, I'm watching Grey Owl Knits very closely to see what else she comes out with soon. And a few of her other color work designs already really called to me. Last but not least are the Spring Mitts by Amanda Sund which is a free pattern again on Ravelry. And this one is again, an all over color work, fingering weight mitten that it's just really pretty. I love a good floral motif on a winter accessory. It turns out I much like the grown together mitts have had my eye on these since I really started thinking again, 
but I simply cannot commit to choosing colors. I don't know what it is about this pattern that I can't choose colors, especially since I want to use scrap for it, but then none of my fingering weight scraps make sense to go together in terms of color or type of fiber or quantity. And so these keep kind of getting pushed, but I love them. I love them so much. I think they would be a lot of fun to knit with the repetitive motif and the color and just how pretty they are. So that is the last of the mittens. And then uh, to wrap up this video, I have two different scarf or shawl patterns that I think are really beautiful. I have been thinking about these but I have yet to commit to either one of these because I'm very wary of scarves. I love wearing scarves. I love to wrap myself multiple times and then be like just the top of my glasses and my eyebrows visible above the scarf as I'm walking around Ottawa. But these I think would help me fulfill that, you know, way of life. These I think would be wonderful to wrap myself in, but I think they would be kind of monsters for what I like to knit and my knitting practice and, and stuff to finish. So the first is the Coral Reef Wrap by Lisa Haynes. It's this really pretty all over rib scarf with very interesting lines and details that is apparently actually quite straightforward and meditative to knit. I just think it would take me a while and probably be a back burner project, but it's classic, it's sleek, it's cozy and I think is maybe a good shawl or wrap for people who don't love overly ornate ones and like something a bit more versatile like myself. And last but not least, this all over color work again floral scarf, which is the Flutter by Tomomi Yoshimoto, which is just so pretty. I think it's knit in the round so that you don't have to purl on the wrong, you don't have to purl any color work. However, I'm not entirely sure. I just picture me with flower mittens and a flower scarf and a bright blue balaclava as the picture of spring in defiance of what the world is like in February. I think that would be nice. I think that would make me really happy. I think this would be a lot of fun to knit and a lot of fun to wear. I just have so many other projects that I ha already have the yarn for and that are already on the needles or that I've promised to other people so that this is really a low priority, but it lives rent free in my brain. That is my list of underrated winter accessory knitting patterns that I wanted to share with you guys. Please let me know down below if you have anything else you think that, that we should add to this list. What are your favorite underrated knitting accessory patterns? Are you knitting any winter accessories this year? Is it even winter in your climate? Let me know. I'm very curious. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. We'll talk again soon.